My name's Junie Stanton. I'm one of the members of the St Philip's congregation. And our reflection today is from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Feast of Dedication to which John is referring here isn't one of the holy festivals prescribed by the Torah. It's more recent than that. It commemorated the rededication of the Second Temple following the Maccabean Revolt, which had taken place just 200 years earlier. That revolt had been partially successful in delivering Israel from foreign rule, so it was something to be celebrated but it left the Jewish nation anticipating a Messiah who would come and finish the job by completely overthrowing the Romans and establishing Israel again as an independent kingdom. These political undertones made the feast an appropriate setting for the question, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. One of the traditional lessons assigned to the synagogues during the Festival of Dedication was Ezekiel chapter 34. Check it out, it's all about sheep and shepherds. In particular, it's about God's displeasure at shepherds who fail in their duty to look after the sheep and who only take care of themselves. So Jesus' response to the question from the crowd is really an exposition of Ezekiel 34. Now sheep are not known for their penetrating intellect or for their ferocity in self-defense. I can't remember the last time I heard of someone dying of a sheep bite. They need feeding, watering, guidance and protection. Without their shepherd, they're vulnerable directionless, prone to stray and get lost and separated from one another. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. He will seek out and save his lost sheep. He'll bind up their wounds, tend the ones who are sick, give them good pasture and a secure place to rest. His sheep are safe with him. He gives them eternal life and nobody can snatch them away from him. In challenging times, there is safety in numbers. In the times in which we find ourselves at the moment, for those of us who are working away from home, we might need to enter a specific building. We might need to wear particular clothing. We might have a certain job title and specific equipment that helps us to do our job. And all of those things can be helpful in getting us in the right frame of mind, getting us into work mode. We work as part of a team 
everyone in that team is drawing on their training and experience to play their part in a common purpose. As a team member at work at the moment, I know that my colleagues have got my back. I benefit from being part of them. We are better together. And that team spirit and that work mode mentality are particularly helpful when the stakes are high. But despite being a real encouragement on a psychological level and a real help on a practical level, being a member of a team doesn't let me as an individual off the hook. I still have to do my best in any given situation, put my name to it and then be accountable for it long term. So it is with sheep. It's better I imagine to be part of a flock than to be alone and exposed to the elements and to predators. Better to have other sheep to huddle up with on a damp, chilly hillside than to spend the night on your own. For all we know, sheep might pool their resources in the daytime to do a bulk online shop during lockdown. They might organise a game of I Spy to sharpen their wits and hone their observational skills. Or they might sing Swing Low Sweet Chariot to keep up team morale. If my attention has drifted and I'm grazing away with my head down whilst humming to myself, my fellow sheep all looking up at the same time and starting to move in the same direction will alert me to the shepherd's voice and to his leading. So being part of the flock will encourage me to notice the cues, follow the shepherd's lead and be less likely to get lost. It's good to be part of the flock. But even so, my individual response is still crucial. Only if I personally hear Jesus' voice, know him and follow him, will I really experience the assurance that he alone can bring. Only by my personal response do I receive confidence and comfort that come from knowing that my Saviour is protecting me through all eternity and that whatever happens, no thing and no body can snatch me from his hand. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. Let's not let anyone else's voice distract us from listening to the one who matters most.